In this video, I'll derive the geometric algebra form of the spherical basis vectors. Here's an illustration of the conventions that we'll use in this video. We'll put phi on the xy plane and theta as the polar angle. To express our spherical position vector, we'll let i equals e1, e2, and we'll write x is r hat times r, where r hat is e3 times e to the j theta. J is the bivector that rotates from E3 to R hat. We need to figure out the value for J. We can do that using this figure. We drop down the projection of R hat onto the XY plane. We find the unit vector that's in that direction. That's illustrated in red. It has the value E1, E to the I theta. We want to multiply this by the vertical axis direction E3, forming J equals E3, E1, e to the i theta. j is the bivector designated in blue. We'll now compute all of the spherical unit vectors, starting with the radial unit vector. Our procedure will be to take derivatives with respect to each of the parameters r, theta, phi, starting with r hat. We say that r hat is the unit vector proportional to dx dr dx dr is just e3 e to the j theta. So r hat is e3 e to the j theta. We already knew this, but this illustrates the, our procedure. Now we'll do the polar unit vector, theta hat. We seek a vector theta hat that's in the direction of dx d theta. dx d theta is r e3 j e to the j theta. We can pull the factor of j into the exponential, leaving r e3 e to the j theta plus pi by 2. Rescaling, we have theta hat is e3 times e to the j theta plus pi by 2. It's so r hat rotated an extra pi by 2 radians. And we'll compute the azimuthal unit vector. This is phi hat proportional to dx d phi. dx d phi is r e3 times the dd phi derivative of e to the j theta. We write out e to the j theta as cos theta plus j sine theta because all the phi dependence is in j. Taking derivatives, we're left with r e3 sine theta times dj d phi which is r e3 sine theta e3 e1 i e to the i phi. The e3 products clobber, leaving e1 i, which is e1 times e1 times e2. The e1's clobber, leaving e2. We're left with r sine theta e2 e to the i phi. We want to rescale this to a unit vector, which just means taking out the r sine theta term, leaving phi hat equals e2 e to the i phi. Now we'd like to verify that our very simple form, the radial unit vector r hat, matches what we would expect in the conventional sine and cosine expressions. First expand out e to the j theta as cos theta plus j sine theta, and expand out j, which is e3 e1 e to the i phi. Our e 3s clobber, leaving e1 sine theta times e to the i phi, or cos phi plus i sine phi. Continue expanding until we get the e1 sine theta cos phi plus e2 sine theta sine phi plus e3 cos theta, which is our expected result. Now we'll expand out our polar unit vector theta hat and find the conventional form. We start with e3 times e to the j theta plus pi by 2. We rewrite e to the j pi by 2 as j and continue expanding the exponential in terms of sines and cosines. We're left with j times cos theta plus j sine theta. Distribute the j's. We have j cos theta minus sine theta. Now I'll write out our explicit form for j, which is e3 e1 times e to the i phi, and expand away. We're left with e1 cos theta, all times, cos phi plus i sine phi minus e3 sine theta. i is e1 e2. When we distribute the e1, the e1 times e1 times e2 leaves us with e2. We're left with e1 cos theta times cos phi plus e2 cos theta times sine phi minus e3 sine theta. This is the conventional form. Now we'll expand the azimuthal unit vector from polar form to determine the conventional vector expression. This is the easiest of the three to do. We start with phi hat equals e2 e to the i phi. We write the e to the i phi as cos phi plus i sine phi. Put in our explicit form for i, which is e1 e2, and distribute our e2s. We have an e2 cos phi term, and we have an e2 times e1 times e2 term, which is minus e1, leaving minus e1 sine phi plus e2 cos phi. It's worth it to summarize our results so far. We've used two helper variables, i equals e1, e2, and j as e3, 
times e1 e to the i phi. That's the pi vector that rotates us from e3 to r hat. We're able to write r hat as e3 e to the j theta. We didn't need a dual-sided rotor formulation because we're rotating strictly in a plane. We found the conventional vector form for r hat. We found that it matched our simple expression from geometric algebra. We found the theta hat vector was e3 rotated by j theta, taking it to r hat and rotating in the other pi by 2 radians 90 degrees so that it's perpendicular to r hat. We also found the conventional vector form, which is considerably more complicated. Finally, we found the azimuthal unit vector, phi hat. Phi hat was e2 e to the i phi. Again, we have a rotation with a single-sided rotor because we're rotating strictly within a plane. It's a different plane than the E3 R hat plane. This is the XY plane. And our phi hat was minus E1 sine phi plus E2 cos phi. Now let's apply our geometric algebra expressions for these unit vectors to find the kinetic energy in spherical coordinates. We want to find the velocity, which is ddx dt, which I'll write as x prime. That's r prime times r hat plus r times r hat prime. We want to expand out the r hat prime. r hat prime is e3 times d dt of e to the j theta. e to the j theta is cos theta plus j sine theta. We take derivatives using the chain rule, first holding j constant, then taking derivatives of j holding theta constant. That gives us e3 j e to the j theta times d dt of theta plus e3 dj dt times sine theta. e3 j e to the j theta is just theta hat. And we expand out our dj dt derivatives, giving us e3 times e3 times e1 i, which is e2 all times e to the i phi times the derivative of phi times sine theta. This leaves us with this leaves us with theta hat theta prime plus e2 e to the i phi phi prime sine theta, which is just theta hat theta prime plus phi hat phi prime all times sine theta. Substitution back into our expression for the derivative of x, we have r prime r hat plus r theta hat theta prime plus r sine theta phi hat phi prime. Notice that all three vector terms are orthogonal, so to find the velocity squared is trivial. We're left with kinetic energy 1 half mv squared equals m by 2 of r prime squared plus r squared theta prime squared plus r squared sine theta squared time all times phi prime squared. This video was created with Manum. For more content, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell. Check out my blog, peteryo.com, for more geometric algebra material, where you can also find a free PDF copy of my book, Geometric Algebra for Electrical Engineers, and detailed latex typeset notes from a number of physics and engineering courses.